For the past six episodes, we've talked in great detail about the SimCity series and its ups and downs. Now, let's spend a little bit of time to talk about the attempts to find success branching off of that most famous game series. So I just want to start off by being clear about what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about every sim game that Maxis has ever made. We would be here for days. I'm talking about some of the most impactful ones, and specifically the ones tied to SimCity. And there's no better place to start us off than at the beginning. SimFarm was a spin-off made in 1993, and the idea is that you're in charge of a farm instead of a town. It was made to try and teach its users about how farms work, but the consensus from critical reviews is that it was a bit fun, but also dull, because all you do is build and manage a farm. There is a city, but you don't build the city, you just work with them. This was their first attempt to build something off of SimCity, and suffice it to say, it was not a success. SimTown was their next significant attempt, and it was released in 1995 as an attempt to market its games to a younger audience, an audience that Max is perceived as not being able to understand the intricacies of city building. You're supposed to balance happiness, jobs, resources, and it turns out to just be incredibly easy with little to no challenge at all. Next Generation gave it one star, saying it's a good title for parents whose kids spend too much time on the computer. Ouch. Wouldn't call that one a success either. Also in 1995, we saw something a little more unique be released, a SimCity card game. Printed by Mayfair Games, the idea was that you could collect these cards and then you play against other players and attempt to build up your cities. Apparently it was based off of Solitaire and is considered to be one of the lowest conflict collectible card games, because the only way to attack was with natural disasters. I actually have a starter pack of these SimCity cards as well as an entire box of booster packs, so maybe someday I'll play with some friends of mine. As it stands, it seems like it was very quickly discontinued, however, although this is probably the most intriguing entry on the list, to me at least. In 1996, we saw the release of SimCopter, a game that, while near and dear to my heart, may have caused the eventual downfall of Maxis, forcing it into the hands of EA due to its financial failure. It's a fun game where you fly your helicopter around the map, complete missions from helping arrest perpetrators, fly injury victims to the hospital, or just fix traffic jams. It has a delightfully snarky sense of humor that I just love. Although I have noticed that it has always been unstable on every computer except the original Windows 98 that I had years ago. What also makes this game so unique though is an easter egg that can be found in it that creates a bunch of men wearing only speedos showing up on the helicopter's landing pad. They would start hugging and kissing each other. The developer who did this was found to be a co-founder of RT Mark, a group of people that essentially covertly tries and pulls pranks on corporations. He was fired soon after, but the controversy did not help the game's notoriety either, seeing as it drew ire from both conservatives and from LGBTQ activists. Ultimately, the game flopped though, because while I do love it, I have to admit that it does look butt ugly, so it's also considered a failure, and a huge one at that. Streets of SimCity, released in 1997, was kind of a spiritual successor to SimCopter, in the sense that it also allowed for the importing of a SimCity 2000 map to play on. In Streets of SimCity, however, you raced other cars, shot them with weapons you picked up, and could even play with other people. It, however, just like SimCopter, was also a failure, and actually turned out to be the last game that Maxis would develop without EA's supervision. With all of this said, were there any spin-offs that were successful? Were there any games that came out of the SimCity branches that we can look back on and say that it could stand on its own? Well, of course. You didn't think I was going to forget, were you? 
The Sims was first being developed at the same time as SimCity 2000 and SimCopter. It took some convincing, but eventually Will Wright managed to start what was then known as Project X, meant to be a life simulating game that was partially based off of a pattern languages by Christopher Alexander, an architect. The Sims, as it was being developed, was actually created out of great difficulty in Wright's life. In 1991, he lost his home in the Oakland firestorm of 1991, and after working to rebuild his life from the ground up, he was inspired to create a game off of his experiences. He wanted to create a game centered around the idea of building a new home. The family bits of The Sims was just some stuff he thought was necessary to make the game fun. When the board of directors first looked at this game, and I quote the co-founder of Maxis, Jeff Braun here, the board looked at The Sims and said, what is this? He wants to do an interactive dollhouse? The guy is out of his mind. And they said this because the board of directors associated dollhouses with girls and video games with boys, so they assumed it would be a failure. But in true Will Wright fashion, whenever failure is expected, success is what comes out. In February of 2000, The Sims was released to massive critical acclaim, selling almost 2 million units in the first year and selling over 6.3 million copies by 2002, beating out Myst, another historically popular PC game of the time. By March of 2015, the original Sim series had sold over 11 million copies, with the entire franchise, expansions and all, selling over 200 million copies, creating a mainstream popularity for itself that even Sim City couldn't emulate. Even to this day, the original Sims game, just the first game, is the ninth best-selling PC game in history, beating out such games as Civilization V, Half-Life, and all of its later Sims iterations. There was also a game known as Simsville that was planned for 2001, with a trailer being released with SimCity 3000, and it seemingly offered a mixture of The Sims and SimCity by allowing for the control of multiple houses in a neighborhood. However, it was cancelled and placed for more expansion packs for The Sims, although it has been noted that the content in the game is likely similar to what was found in The Sims expansion pack, Hot Date. Although Maxis made many attempts to spin off their popular series, in the end it was the one that had the lowest expectations that raised the ceiling, breaking record after record on sales and remaining popular even to this day. I never played The Sims, but what's crazy to me is that there are many more people who have played The Sims than have played SimCity. In the next episode, and the last, join me as I close off talking about the greatest city building video game series in history. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future and if you're interested I've also made plenty of other videos so go check those out too. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.